let's delve into mind-blowing stories of wild one-night stands on paternity court. Prepare for jaw-dropping moments and revelations. A case where a man finds out he could possibly be a father due to a one-night stand he had four years ago. These are cases of crazy one-night stands on paternity court. Four years ago, you had a one-night stand with the father, her three-year-old son, Charles. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Additionally, you are suing she sold your 1994 Pontiac without your permission. That's correct. Mr. Williams is in court to prove paternity. He claimed having a one-night stand with the defendant four years ago, but he wants to prove he didn't father her son. Ms. Davis is certain of the paternity and says he's just running away from responsibilities. Ms. Davis, you are certain Mr. Williams is the father and claim he's denying your son to get out of his responsibility. Yes, Your Honor. The results of their past have brought them in this critical state. He has no recollection of using protection or not, but she is positive that he's the father. The atmosphere and everything, we party, ended up um, spending the night together that night. So it was, in your mind, a one-night stand? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Did you use protection? I need you to take me back to this night and get to how this man is just finding out about this baby three months ago. Okay, at the time, I was in a relationship, so I was for certain that my boyfriend was my child father. We was broken up, but we wasn't. We was split it for a couple of days. Okay. And I was just mingling, and that's when I met Mr. Williams. His doubts come as a result of the birth certificate. The signatory space for the father was blank. The window of conception dates proved two men as potential fathers, but it's shocking when he says there are more. Didn't sign the birth certificate, so that right there gave me because a lot of suspicion. The man was not for certain that he was my son's father. Okay, so he did um the beginning of September. So this calendar is full. Uh, three Your, Your Honor, I would I, it would have to be at least it would have to be at least three or four other people that um, in the, the few months that I've known about him, I've spent time with him, um, taking him out to play and all of this, he doesn't respond to. That's what I mean. There's, there's so much confusion in there. It has to be more than just, okay, that was two, that was three people. There is no justification for her to be angry when he has done more than enough to be there. She questioned why he plays a fatherly role if he doesn't believe he is the father. Father of a child, why are you around? I why mean, not? That doesn't make sense. Why not? Why not? If I you get, knew it, you didn't have a DNA well, test result, why would you even play father or a role of a child that you... I'm not understanding why you are so angry with him. I'm not let's angry, be honest, but Mr. This man, in my estimation, has done a lot, a lot more than some men I've right, seen. and I understand that. Mr. Williams' girlfriend says that he had conducted a home test kick that was supposed to be ready in two days, but Miss Davis purposely delayed it. But what's more shocking is that she never turned in the DNA test. A test, a home kit test, that was supposed to be back in two days. Mrs. Davis told us it takes two and a half weeks to get the test back, but on the box it said two days. She finally said she got the test back two and a half weeks, two and a half weeks later, come back, come on over here, come and get it. We're expecting to come over there and get a paper saying, hey, this is email address that is not even registered at all. When we put it in there, it says no account found. Her son was born with two extra fingers, and so does Mr. Williams. And this further proves her claim that he is the biological father. A six finger, which really looks like a little bump on the side of right, his hand. Right, because when he was three weeks, Oh, the doctor put some little um, strings around it and they fell off. Yes, yes. So my baby was born with each one on each finger and Mr. Williams had one on his left hand. So in your mind, that furthered your belief that Mr. Williams is your child's biological yes, father. Yes, Your Honor, it did. The paternity can only be ascertained by the results. Let's see how it turns out. It has been determined by this court. Mr. William, you are the father. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yes, yes, Your Honor, it is. Okay. Because wow. I... <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you so much. I really appreciate wow. it. Wow. And I'm very Good. happy. Thank you so much. Mr. James has petitioned the court for a paternity test because he is in denial that he fathered Miss Schimmel's daughter and intends to prove so. But she's so confident that he's definitely the father. Mr. James, you and Ms. Schimmel have been in court over fidelity issues in the past. Now you are back in court and you are claiming that it would have been nearly impossible to prove paternity today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so Mr. James, why do you say it would have been nearly impossible? Oh, sure. It just doesn't make any sense because we only slept together one time. That's all it takes. I agree. I agree. 
from meeting in a party to being intimate that night without protection was crazy. He tells the court that they never got to talk again because she wanted to patch things up with her ex. She was very fun when I met her. We uh, we had a good time. We uh, we drank a lot and we uh, we left together. We left the party together. With and protection or unprotected? No, we did not. We did not use protection. <laughs> so. I got up the next morning and uh, we, uh, we didn't talk for about a year, 11 months to a year. They coincidentally met again and told him she had a kid and her dad was her ex-boyfriend. Well, Mr. James didn't know what he was diving into as they started off a relationship. Uh, she comes walking into the factory and we see each other again. Really? Yeah, and I didn't even recognize her. Her hair was different. I didn't really recognize her at all. Well, I it was <laughs> just one night. Did you get a good look at her? <laughs> So you said, I, I have a daughter and she's by my ex. We, she told me in the beginning that this other gentleman, her ex, was the father. So for at least nine to 10 months that we had been together after that, I was prepared for that. I, I mean, I was thinking that her ex was the father. Right. Things, however, get rocky when she tells him there is a possibility of him being the father of her daughter. She had conducted a DNA test with the alleged father, and it turns out he wasn't the father. I had O'Shell tested and I just got the results back. Here they are. So I'm sitting here like, what are you talking about? Because you've been telling me that- They right look there. a lot alike. I mean, all my kids look alike. I had <laughs> them all early. Well, I think it has a little no. bit to do with the fact that you had the ex tested and that you told him that the ex was the dad and only determined that he's not the father. Then you just proclaim that he is. Having a third person in the picture also made him have his doubts. She claims he's only a friend, but was sexually involved with him during the window of conception. However, she claimed to have used protection. Your Honor, I mean, we were both sleeping with other people. So at that That's time- That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. it. As soon as she tells me that he's not the father, then I'm sitting here like, oh, what is going on? And so, well, why doesn't that make sense? If the other guy- I never uh, messed with him since I've been in a relationship with Randall. I've been faithful to Randall. I don't know Randall. that. But were you- But, but my were thing you is, is that- sleeping with him during the window of conception? Two days after I slept with him, I slept with Sven. One thing learned at paternity court is that the looks don't really do much when it comes to determining paternity. He says her daughter has some physical characteristics that are different from his other kids. Um, O'Shell has blonde hair. Other my other two kids have black hair. Dark streak black hair, brown eyes. I love the little girl to death, but she's just not, she's not mine. She's yours. The only way to know the truth is the results. Let's see if he's the biological father or not. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Swanson is not the father. All right, the next result is for Mr. James. In the case of James versus Schimmel, when it comes to two-year-old O'Shell are not the father. The court opens to Mr. Montgomery, claiming the defendant is a liar. He is in court because she's in denial of the paternity of her daughter. Miss Dabney, however, claims that he is a weak, gullible man who doubts the little girl because of his meddling family. Mr. Montgomery, according to my court documents, you claim the defendant is a liar and you admit to poor judgment when you slept with her. There have been rumors that she is known for pinning babies on men and you opened your case today because you now have doubt. You fathered her three-year-old daughter, Naraya. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Dabney. You claim the plaintiff is a weak, gullible man and is only doubting your daughter because of his meddling family. Ms. Dabney says she had met him on Facebook, but he disputes saying he knew her through a mutual friend. Regardless of how they met, it is clear they did have a one-night stand that resulted in being pregnant. Was, you say it's a mutual friend, mutual friend but friend. There was no like, relationship between the two of us. So how did you meet her, Mr. Montgomery? Through a he mutual inboxed friend. me on Facebook. He gave me her number. <laughs> no, he just told me about a girl that was easy that he used to fool with. <laughs> And so he gave me the number. I went over there. It was like, yeah, I see how you like, I see how you doing your own thing. You keep a job, you take care of your daughter. Whoop to whoop, whoop this, that's whoop to that. We go to my homegirl's house and chill, talk, do this, do that. He told me he was gonna pull up on me, but he didn't pull up on me, he walked up on me. She, however, had another guy in her life and led on to him believing he is the father. 
The day Mr. Montgomery was allowed to see the baby, he noticed a resemblance. Yeah, I had told the other guy that he was the father because he was doing for me. So I'm like, well, I'm already getting in good. So Gold if nigga. I tell him Gold that I'm nigga, pregnant got by him, now. after that, he was like, when y'all getting out of the hospital? I was like, we're getting out of the hospital tomorrow. So after we got out of the hospital, he shot over there. He ran to my apartment and came and seen her. Was holding her for a long time. So I'm like, why is you looking at her like that? Because she looked just like me. Mom, but three years later, dollars. you want a paternity test? You let your family I need, hype you I need, up. I need my proof. There is no justification keeping him away from the child when he could be a potential father. She sent a message to him saying he can't see the child. It's put up, but I have to And so this evidence you submitted to the court is what? A tax exchange? Me, a me asking if I could... I went from seeing this child every weekend on my off days for the last Not two every years. Weekend. Like I said, every weekend from seeing this child on my off days to... So you say, can I talk to Naraya? And she responds, me and my boyfriend agree on her not speaking to you, so have a nice life. Yes, ma'am. If he wants to step up, he should be ready for the responsibilities to come with it. Watch as the truth is unveiled with the paternity results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Montgomery, you are the father. All right, so there's amazing fathers, and then there's some really, really bad ones. Like, watch as paternity court unfolds the trials and tribulations of parenthood in cases where a man is in a fix to choose between his wife and his mistress. These are the dumbest fathers on paternity court. You say you are shocked that he's denying he's baby Lamar's biological dad, especially since you discovered he's the one leading a double life. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Now, a man's got to choose between his wife or his mistress in hopes the DNA results is going to help him make a decision. All right, so dude bro is claiming that the mistress hasn't been exactly faithful and believes that that baby could be from any number of multiple men. Now, they met in June 2016. She was out having breakfast with her friend when he walked up to her and offered to pay for her meal. From there, we hooked up a couple of times or whatever. So, uh -oh. first, you just dating Cass. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, you have a baby mom there? He like, no. I'm like, uh, you got a wife? And he was like, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, and that's when he tell me, like, oh, they are separated. They going through a divorce. You know, it, it didn't come up. You know, I felt like it didn't come up, like... You know. So she thought everything was gonna be okay, and when she found out she was preggers, he was happy even though he was still married to his wife. Now it looks like he's already got three kids who aren't even his wife's, but from his previous relationships. Now they've been married for 10 years, but they never had any kids together. Mm, I call that a pattern. But So don't you believe that would discredit? Yeah, I, that's what why I didn't, yeah. That was, but that was like- So at what point that. you have to come, wife sends a picture to you of them in the bed. Yes, and he was asleep and she was taking a picture. She sent it to me and that was After time, you're pregnant. Like, oh, you, you know? sent his wife yeah, a picture yeah, of yeah, the pregnancy yeah. test. Yeah, yeah. Now she believes that Miss Dallas knew pretty early on that he was married and she knows this for certain because Miss Dallas had called her to ask if she and Mr. Stewart together. Now, Miss Dallas naturally tried countering this, but she came prepared with receipts to prove that she wasn't just entertaining Mr. Stewart, but multiple men. Those inboxes are what they send me. You don't see nothing of me sending nothing back. I can't help with nobody. Miss Dallas, were you intimate with anyone else around the time baby Lamar? Did he participated in doctor's appointments. He, he was there. Yeah. And at the birth, he was there. Yeah. Roberta knows what Roberta has to do for herself at this point. Cedric has three children of his own that he has neglected to take care of her children. No, that's not Hold true, because me and him take... You haven't even been knowing okay. Cedric it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, you when he's been Cedric and Jones. Ladies, still in ladies, ladies, ladies. Now, after all the back and forth, she revealed that Ms. Dallas had told him that she had all of her kids two months early, but she denied it. Now, if they got this much information, this case shouldn't take as long as it's taken. I mean, they're clearly both aware that he's playing them and they're gladly getting played. One another, but nobody's holding him accountable. Oh, I hold him accountable for everything. No, she like, don't. I did she not, holds me. Let me tell you no, this, Your don't. Honor. I did not marry Lakeitha. I married this person right, right so here. Right, so why try to my harass issue, me? My and... issue is with no marriage is gonna last because they know they can go to her or her. Hold on now, Miss Ward. It's just your husband doing. He, just, he told me before you came in the courtroom. I said, were you out acting like a single man? I said, yes. Now, Mr. Stewart's one confused man. The only way to move forward is to get the results and find out whether or not he the baby daddy. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Stewart, you are the father. Hey, I told you, baby. I told you. I ain't got no reason to lie at all. So listen. 
So this dude claims his ex-girlfriend took him for everything that he had, and now he's in court to prove that he didn't father her nine-month-old son. Now she says that he's a compulsive liar and believes that he's denying her son out of spite because she no longer wants to be with him. Once I ran out of money, she left me high and dry. I'm just here today to prove that this is not my son so she can get out of my life. And so you don't believe you're the father, not one bit. That's not true, Miss McSeer? Not at all. Tell me, you say you know for certain Mr. Campbell is your child's father. We were in a relationship and we stayed together and we was together every day. All right. Your Honor, I went through her phone on numerous occasions and I see her and you expect me to think we're in an exclusive relationship? That, that, Any that, proof that, of this? That makes Any no proof sense. of this? You know it's the truth. This is part of your habitual lying. Alright, so when he saw her shirtless with another man in the room, she told him nothing was going on. Then he asked who she was in the room with. Now, he walked back into the room and she had a little smirk on her face and the gut was sitting with his head down because he was too scared to look up. Well, at least that's what Mr. Campbell believed. Because in September of 2017, Hurricane Arma hit. At that time, we were staying together. All we did was make a baby. So... I left. From the mailbox. I, I didn't drive over the mailbox. street. I didn't drive over the street. You didn't drive street, here. Right? You don't even have a car. You was a bum when I met you. Sounds real. Sounds like a person I want to pin a because, baby on. Because no, you you was taking. You took you everything right. from me. Okay. All right. So the watermelon plopped out of the garden on the 15th of June in 2018. Now, if you hit calculate on the conception calculator, the conception calendar, the window of conception, will be approximately September 20th to September 24th. And the date of intercourse would have been somewhere between September 17th to September 24th. It's not like we didn't plan this, baby. We, he wanted another child. We talked about it. We made him. And now he want to deny him because he don't have no money. He don't want to take care of him. I do everything for my son. I ain't got no money because you took it all. Your Honor, she don't care about me having a relationship with him. She cares about me giving her money. Now now she's trying to I get really my think parents. I'm the now she's trying to get money from her parents now. Oh. That, that's exactly what it is. She's trying that to get stuff from my like parents. <laughs> Now, the dude appears to have more evidence, and Mr. Campbell really came prepared. Now, a friend of the family had contacted him, telling him that she'd gotten a DNA test done with another dude to see if he was the father. Now, she disagreed with him, but I guess we gotta find out who's telling the truth soon. One man and a baby mate, but the unknown man and the definitely the paternity test is definitely a lie. So you've never had a DNA test with no, another man pertaining to legacy. Because there's no other man. There's no problem. Your Honor. How many? Wait, wait, wait. What have you bought him? time relationship. What have you bought him? What have I you bought him? I, I beg her. Can I see him? And I when I bring him around, what happened? When I, I, I bring him around, down, what happened? Your Honor, I... When I bring him around, what happened? Two seconds into the visit, you're in my face. Hey, we do not have to have a relationship. All right. That's not what All you right. last night. <laughs> After coming to court with all the exhibits and specifics, Mr. Campbell wasn't quite the same after all. Now, there's so much going on here, but there's a kid involved, and that's what matters the most. Now, this precious little squirmer deserves to know who his father is. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Campbell, you are the father. So the man she claims she loves is standing in the court's hallway, but she confessed that she cheated on him with the defendant. What's love got to do? Got to do with the head? Apparently not a goddamn thing. Alright, so the defendant's in court to determine the paternity of his one month old kid in hopes of saving his relationship. Now he also kind of hopes that he ain't the baby daddy. Well, me and Ms. Mr. Mitchell met at a bus station when I was coming from Chicago to Arkansas. And we kind of like kicked it off quick and became girlfriend and boyfriend. And two months into relationship, I met Mr. Anderson. It's Michaela's father. That's right, Chana. Yeah. So, Mr. Anderson, you have doubts. Yes, I do. Please explain. Well, I have doubts because I know she was sleeping with other men. Yeah, explain I, yes. to the court. Look, we are all, this is a small town. A small town. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows who drives what. In the classic move, he found out that she was pregnant on Facebook. Now, she stated that she'd sent him a picture of the pregnancy test via Facebook, and she also did the same with Mr. Mapson. Now, he was pretty excited, and then two weeks later, she told him that it could be somebody else's. Well, all right, look. Say what you will, at least she was honest about it. 
Sir, thank you for joining us, Mr. Mapson. So we're here, of course, discussing the paternity as it relates to beautiful Michaela, and we understand Ms. I didn't want to just involve myself, to involve myself in that situation, then find out that it's not mine. It just, I didn't feel comfortable with that. So you didn't go to any doctor's appointments with her? Nope. And now, sometimes I call and promise her that I would come, but just couldn't, I ain't show up. Yeah, I and did. he stopped answering the phone for me, Mr. Mapson. The reason I blocked off because of the stuff she was doing on Facebook. She was, you know, baby she, daddy. people would ask me, even my baby mama, the one, the, my girl I'm with, ain't with her now because that's destroyed. Since he had some real doubts, he told her he wanted a DNA test and they argued about it because according to her, he wanted her to pay half for the DNA test. So to Mr. Mapson, and she wasn't gonna pay half for both men. She went half on the baby, but doesn't want to go half on the DNA test. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous. Has anyone bonded with her? Have either of yes. you two gentlemen? You have, Mr. Mapp. Yes. So now that she's here. I went to see the baby, and it's, she was pretty. She was a beautiful baby. So I showed her around to my family. No, we're not, because we're trying to get the results of this, and then maybe we could move forward. But I don't want to lose Mr. Mapson, but I'm afraid that if he's not the father, our relationship is basically over. So, Mr. Mapson. Marry or whatever, we just do what we gotta do. And what if she's not yours? If she's not, that right there, that'll hurt. Now that Mr. Anderson's relationship has been destroyed, she's worried the situation's gonna destroy her relationship with Mr. Mapson, because she doesn't want to be with Mr. Mapson. Now, she's right on this one. That might be the case if the kid turns out not to be his. Well, there was a guy that stayed there a week, but I, this is the guy. Me and the guy was not together. His girlfriend put him out, and me being as a friend, because he had to get all his... Like, y'all weren't friends. Y'all was just like me and you were. No, we was not. He stayed there until he got all his utilities at his house back And you didn't on. tell Mitch and about that, did you? No, no, I did not tell Mitch. So, the bottom line is, no, the father of your beautiful little girl could be someone other than these two men. No, Your Honor, because that happened way before I even got pregnant. Unfortunately, her credibility just went down the two. Now let's check out them results. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Anderson, you are not her father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I knew it. We have another result. Four. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Mapson, you are her father. Now, as much as this might be a hard pill for some of you ladies out there to swallow, not every mom deserves to be a mom. And it takes a lot to be a good mother, and being a responsible parent is a crucial part of that. So watch as paternity court unfolds the experience that's gonna leave you questioning the boundaries of motherhood. These are the most irresponsible moms on paternity court. Ms. Allen, you've opened your case today to prove to your on-again, off-again boyfriend that he is the father of your 20-month-old daughter, Adriana. You hope today's DNA result can save your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. A man claims his ex-girlfriend slept with a co-worker on the job and maintains that he ain't the daddy of her 20-month-old daughter. Now, he claims that it's medically incorrect for him to be her kid's dad. Now, she believes that he's making up the fact that he had paternity issues in his other relationship out on her. How do you feel, Mr. Brewer? Do you believe your doubts are credible or not? Yes, Ron, I, I know she's not mine. I have evidence that she was talking to other guys and stuff like that, and like, like she said, I've been hurt before, so I mean, I've had children put on me, and I just don't believe she's mine. And so you admit you are denying this baby? Yes, ma'am. So tell me why you have this doubt. Brewer, explain to the court. One, one day her phone went off, and I was like, what's going on, you know? So I ended up looking at the phone, and when I looked at the phone, it was one of her friend's name, but when I started read, it wasn't no friend. Oh. It was another man, so... And what did the text message say? Your Honor, that was, that's a lie. Well, it, it was one of, one of the text messages that I read was like, you know, I don't, I don't want to wear a condom. Really? So I'm like, you know, what, what's going on with this? You know, why, why is she talking about that stuff like that? Your Honor, it's um, his baby. I just want him to stop denying the child. I didn't mess with nobody. The text message he's talking about, I don't recall that. I don't remember none of that. I don't remember texting anybody like that. Yeah, I have guy friends. If that's the issue, he don't need to have female friends. And so is that the only text you saw, Mr. No, Brewer? No, ma'am. It, it, it was like several different guys. That, that That's what made me mad. Now, that wasn't all that made him have doubts. Now, she worked at a department store, and somebody that worked there showed him a video of her sleeping with some other dudes while they were supposed to be on break. 
Your Honor, the thing is, is is the girl, the, the girl that worked at the department trying store. Trying to talk to him, so of course she gonna make up lies about me. She was trying to talk to him. That's why she showed me the video. Cause she was like, I, I don't want you getting done like that. But the thing is, what video? I never seen the video, I never did it. So I don't know what he even talking about. And you knew for certain it was Ms. Al. Yes, ma'am. How did you know? Because of what she had on. What I have on? I we all, we all wear the same thing at work. So what did I have on? Denise, that was you. We I mean, all I wear the same thing. When you found out you were pregnant, take me back to that day. Um, when I found out I was, pre I was pregnant, I ain't gonna say he wasn't happy, but the vibe he was getting off, you know? And it was just like, he was happy, but he wasn't. Like, it was a su big surprise to him, unexpected. We was already struggling with just one child. And then having another one made it even harder and tougher. When I was going to into labor, I was having contractions. I told him I didn't feel good, I need to go to the hospital. Now, he claimed that they had one day had an argument, and she told him that he wasn't a dad. Now, she admitted telling him that because every time they got into an argument, he says that he ain't raising the kids because they ain't his. Then he gets angry and leaves. I mean, I guess that was it for him. You can't be unringing that bell. Hi, Your Honor. Thank you so much for being back with us. Um, we're here uh, discussing the paternity of baby Adriana, and Mr. Brewer has stated that he believed that two O-negative type blood type parents could not produce an A blood type child. That is his position. He believes that that is why Adriana is not his child, and I needed to call on you to find out if this is, in fact, possible. Two O-type parents traditionally cannot make anything other than an O baby. However, there's spontaneous mutations. So the DNA can actually change even though mom and dad each give their part and they come together. Once it's combined in the baby, something goes a little different and it starts producing those antigens that are on the outside of the blood cell, hence making the child a different blood type. Oh, that's fast. What is the probability of that? What, is, what percentage of children could this happen to? So spontaneous mutations are fairly rare. Depending on your ethnicity and race, it can range anywhere from one in a thousand to one in 10,000. The fact that it's so rare furthers his doubts and the fact that it's just possible to some way maybe give him the sense that it could have happened. Now, sadly, he still denies the baby, not just because of the blood type, but because of her behavior. When it comes to one year old Adriana Brewer, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Brewer, you are the father. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. You are very welcome, sir. After inviting another man into the bedroom, a man's got doubts that both of his girlfriend's kids are his. Now, he claims that his doubt's valid because he was present when another man impregnated her in the family. Now, he thought he was building ain't salvageable until he's got DNA proof. Two children and your family on the line, I understand that. I met him very young, and being young, everybody says you don't know what love feels like, but I disagree. I feel like I've loved him since day one, loved him since I was 13 years old. He said that I was gonna, you know, be his baby's mom a long time ago. And it's hurtful now that, now that, you know, yes, I am your daughter's mom. And it just gets, I had just gotten out of a relationship with my son's father and had moved back to Iowa. Well, I ended up where I had slept with another man. And this is before me and Mr. Jaramillo had gotten together from a girl that I had went to school with. And she called and decided to tell him that I was sleeping with. What did she say to you exactly, Mr. Jaramillo? She said that the baby that Amber, Miss Strempke had, uh, has been impregnated with wasn't mine, that she had been sleeping with numerous males. How long had you me. been together at that point? We had been together for two and a half, three weeks. On top of that, the baby was born three weeks earlier than expected. Now, she claimed she was up front with him, and she had told him that she had slept with one other person before they got together. Now, when she told him this, he was getting other information. Our best friend had told him that there was another dude that she slept with, too. I had never slept with anybody but one person besides you, and that was before we had gotten together. But Naviana is four years old. Did you ever attempt to have a paternity test back then? No, Your Honor, because every time I brought it up, it was always, oh, I know she's mine. If I had any doubts at that point, why would you sign such an important paper in her life? Did you sign the birth certificate? This is your name? Yes, Your Honor. Alejandro Jaramillo. That's you. Yes, Your Honor. You signed it. Yes. So you acknowledged paternity. You said, this is my daughter. Yeah. I was happy as a father, you know? I was happy in that moment that, yeah, I'm a father now, you know? So you've signed it? Yes, ma'am. And then after you leave the hospital, those doubts start creeping in again. Yep. At this point, the questions of paternity were flying all over the place, and she was done having kids till he started begging her to have another kid as he wanted to try having a boy. Now, she agreed to it because no paternity questions was being brought up. 
they ended up deciding to spice things up a bit. Up having a female threesome. female threesome with him, so he got to pick another woman, and it it was what it was. We did it, um, and then it was maybe a couple weeks later. It got brought up. It'd only be fair if we had a male, male, and you, and decided because I have so many like body issues, not like in the way I look after I've had a child and everything that I decided no to I have a threesome it. with your children's mother. Yes, ma'am. Was this your suggestion, sir? It was a mutual suggestion between Amber and I. We had gone through it back and forth between Miss Strempke and I. It was a toss up back and forth. One minute she'd want to do it, the next minute she didn't on the spot. So to get it done and over with, yeah, I did bring this friend of mine. Considering the timing of the pregnancy after the admitted threesome without protection, does she really need to explain it? I mean, ain't it obvious that there's a paternity question involved? The first doctor's appointment by myself and the doctor that I saw assured me that there was no possible way that I had to have already been pregnant before that. It cleared my conscience. I felt better about it. Like, okay, you know, I had to have already been pregnant when this happened. Could be just one person. There's a 50-50 chance. Really? Yes. I mean, with I'm Lexi, not just gonna accept Lexi that looks like my buddy that. that we had the threesome with. Like, you believe she does? When I first told him that there was a chance that he might be the father, he said he wants to be involved. He doesn't want to be apart from her if this is his, you know? I want this paternity test done. I want to know. I have to know. And she's going to lose her dad because of a threesome? Like, that's what I feel like I'm stuck with right now is my daughters are not going to have a dad if this turns out to where Lexi is his friends like he thinks so much. It's pretty heartbreaking that a four-year-old's got to hear all that, man. She deserves to know who her father is. It'd be unfair for her to grow up and feel unwanted. Naviana Jaramillo, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Jaramillo, you are the father. The next result reads as follows. In the case of Stremke versus Jaramillo, when it comes to eight-month-old Alexis Jaramillo, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Jaramillo, you are the father. A woman comes to court to save her marriage and prove to her husband that her youngest child is his despite having been caught talking to other men online. Now, he believes that she cheated on him and has been lying about the kid's paternity, and now he says that a divorce is next up. I need to find out the answer if this is my child or not. He if always results to that. Anytime we have a fight or an argument or whatever, it's always divorce. It's never work it out, let's talk, whatever. He always throws up divorce in my face like I'm supposed to just... Supposed to be, was supposed to be her ex-boyfriend that was right before my two yeah, sons was he born. Did. Yeah, whatever. he did. I've seen some Facebook messages from these guys, these, this person before. Well, yeah, it was somebody did. else. But it's okay she, when he does it. No, she... He lets his imagination, his <clears throat> mind go off. Oh, well, if you said this, then I, it's probably this and this. And if you did this, then they comment on stuff. But if it's me, it's, I'm, oh, I want to sleep with this person. I'm Is that true, Mr. Well, Merrifield? Is there a well, double standard here? No, there's yes. not a double standard. Yes, no. there is. No. You texting, is you texting these dudes about, about y'all uh, I got evidence of the text messages and stuff too. This is just one text. Let I, I admit it. Let me, I person. admit it to the from text one per, from one person. It doesn't matter. Okay, but, but she it doesn't matter. Matter. She claimed that she's never been intimate with a person in question, and they were high school sweethearts. He was 13 and she was 14. He used to want to have a family with her because he loved her. Then the first three years were good till they turned 18. I have to deal with that. She'll break up with me for a weekend, go do whatever she want to do and come back and want to be back together on a Wednesday. <laughs> That's you a know lie. What I'm she always put other men before me. And he tells me, just because they crossed the line one time, they can still be good friends. No, the reason but why... But because I'm... it's me, oh, no, I automatically want to have sex with this person. She does and it. So and you I'm all type of names. I'm marriage, I'm but this, functioning. I'm You've been together. You have had 16 years to figure out how to set some boundaries. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some working parameters, expectations expectations concerning how you want to operate as a family. Yeah. I, I, I mean, what I'm listening to just feels like anything goes. She claims that he criticizes everything she does and doesn't even put a thought to getting her gifts on special days, hence why she enjoys talking to other men. Now, he admitted that he was intimate with her during the time that he was conceived, so there's absolutely a possibility that the kid could be his. When it's good, it's not my fault. But he also 
If I'm on my daughter's side, then I'm wrong, or I'm taking her side, or I'm against him. I have been with this little boy, this young man, since he was 14 years old. He still doesn't know how much I love him. He still thinks I can't always be on his side because he's not always right. She's right sometimes, and sometimes he's right. She's wrong for doing that text. I told her she shouldn't do that. Well, I she, love you, Devontae. Well, yes, you do. Well, I'm always telling her to be with you. Because she always give the right advice to take. I'm not a take. follower. I'm not well, a who's follower. Right? Who's the, who's All right, right family, Miss Andre, let me ask you, do you believe Kane is your grandson? I know grandson? Kane is his. I know Kane is his. You do. My daughter would tell me. Now, he's been throughout the birth and only started denying the kid when he saw the text messages. Now, when the child was born, he was looking at his eyes to check if they had the same color or eyes. Now, it's pretty ridiculous to think that all of his kids would have his kid. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Merrifield, you are Kane's father. <laughs> or an apology, Devontae. Ugh. Mr. Peterson, you are not her father. Oh my God. Are you serious? Really, Mom? Desperation and confusion often causes people to make some very bad decisions. And the fact that life still remains that actions have got consequences. Now, a woman comes to court with her kid's alleged grandmother because all the potential fathers to her kid are dead. The fuck? Now, confused, she begins to tell him what they want to hear, and unfortunately for her, it backfires. Here are the most oblivious liars on paternity court. After appearing previously in court to establish paternity of her kid, a woman was shocked to learn that her own paternity may be in question. Go, your world came crumbling down when your wife, Mrs. Peterson, revealed she had been keeping a secret that your 22-year-old daughter, LaJoya Jackson, may not be your biological daughter. Is that correct? Yes, it is. No matter how this turns out, hearts are gonna be broken, and some may already have been. Now, I mean, just calculating the dates since they've been together, they were both too young to be having kids, particularly the plaintiff. Now, he was roughly 12, and he's raised this kid for 22 years. We were out of state, we just moved here, and a guy just randomly came up to my door and was like, oh, your mom told me where you live at, I'm your father, Um, I went to jail, and your mom said I, another guy was your father because she didn't want nobody not to be there for you. When I first came to my mom about it, she was like, oh, that's an old friend of mine, but he's like not right in the head. He, he's funny. I don't know why he says that or whatever. She kind of brushed it off, but I said it in front of my, my father, Mr. Peterson. I said it in front of him, but she was like kind of trying to quiet it off, like don't talk about it right now, you know? Now this will take a lot to fix, but if they start communicating and apologizing, something's definitely gonna change. What I really love is that they still try to be there for themselves. It's a potential that somebody else could be my father because I never thought that this could happen to me. Never thought. I never used to think as a child like, oh, this might not be my dad. I just wake up and be like, oh, dad, make me some cereal. Not, oh, this might not be my dad. And now if he feels as if he can't take this and I'm not his child, he can walk away at any moment. And he has no ties or connections to me or my children if he's not my father. Man, I can't imagine how the plaintiff's gotta be feeling. It's gotta be overwhelming, especially because it's something you can't control. To LaJoya Jackson, when did you find out that you could potentially be her biological father? Um, I found out like about two weeks ago. She contacted me through Facebook and basically she had once told me once before that, you know, she could have been pregnant or whatever. So, but I had no move. I moved away. But basically, you know, we had met at a party, you know, we was drinking and you know, everything, there was a lot going but on. But drinking mean that you couldn't have been the father. Right, but exactly. Why Why didn't you try to pursue and see what was going on? Well, basically with... at the time I was young, I was scared. And you know, I really just wasn't ready to be a father at that time. So, so when you grew up, why didn't you try to contact her like, oh, let me see what she did with the child or any, like that's a straight I, deadbeat move right there. Like, yeah, I basically. I might have a child in this world, but I don't care. I'm just gonna go on, move away, whole out of state, a million miles away and not even see if the child is mine. Did Mrs. Peterson say to you, I'm pregnant and you're the father? Yeah, somewhat like that. She said it. I could be the father. You could be. Yeah. Talk about a drama llama, man. There's just so much anger and fear everywhere. Let's get to the results and find out what's up. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Peterson, you are not her father. Oh my God. Are you serious? Really, Mom? A woman believes that a ghostly image in the video confirms that a deceased man is her son's father. 
However, the alleged grandmother wants some proof. A loving five-year relationship with the defendant's son, Georgie, who unfortunately died in a motorcycle accident. You claim the defendants initially accepted your son, Xavier, but now need proof that they are Xavier's grandparents. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. I do believe that he was drilling for oil downtown, man. That would explain the fact that he's never mentioned it to his parents. But that does raise a little bit of doubt. He sent, he actually sent me a picture or a text message when I was talking to him one time. And he sent me a picture and he said, um, Dad, what do you think? It, this could be my kid. And I, and I told him at that time that, you know, I really couldn't tell from the picture. How old was Xavier when you got that text? A year old, because he, um, he came to me also. So I know everyone that he interacted with, okay? I've never seen her before. Oh, I was just about to ask you, yes. is it your testimony uh -huh. you never met Ms. Shemelinsky? No. Did your son ever mention Miss Shimelins? No. Now that makes things more complicated and less complicated at the same time. Now, if she's not sure if it's his, I'm pretty sure she'd have some other options. Hurting Miss Brown that there are more men than just one additional man? One. It can't be. So there's one other man besides How are George. You telling me oh, it's one, so it's one other, you saying? Yeah, it's be, it's him and, and the oh, other guy. Oh, one other man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Did you ever tell the other guy? That... He had passed away when I was five months pregnant. Oh. He had got murdered. Oh, so, good Lord. Um, a family member of mine had contacted his family. They did not respond until Xavier turned two. And they said, if I come up with the money, then they'll do the test. So both potential fathers of this beautiful little boy ha have passed away? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Everything about this is just jacked. No matter what the results is, man, the kid's never gonna know either of his biological fathers. Is... <laughs> Zero percent. <laughs> The kid was born in a messy love triangle full of lube, passion, and deceit. And all the parties gather in court to find out who the biological father of the baby girl is. And the man you claim you love is standing in our courtroom hallway. Yes, Your Honor. But you confess you cheated on him with the defendant. That's right, Your Mr. Honor. Mr. Anderson. So today you're here to determine the paternity of your one-month-old daughter, Michaela, in hopes of saving your relationship. Yes, Your Honor. I hate that something. The plaintiff got herself into this mess. Unfortunately, even if the defendant hadn't done her wrong, he's not the one in court being all confused. He bought me a bed when I first I'm not moved talking my about that. I'm not, I'm not talking about that cousin. He bought you a bed? I'm not talking about that cousin. Yes. Well, I I'm know, not talking oh, about that. Wait a that. minute. Wait, wait, there's more. Wait, there are more cousins? Hold on. No, I don't know what cousin he's talking about. Hold on, Mr. Anderson. So you do know his car. Yes. And so you know it was him. Yes. And you saw the car parked there. Yes. All right. I want to understand how did you figure out or find out that Miss Whitman was pregnant? Well, actually, Facebook. Uh, my baby mama, she didn't even call me. I sent you the picture of the pregnancy test. And you sent it to Mr. Anderson? Yes, Your Honor. Did yes, you send she, it to anybody uh, yes, else? Yes, she... No. I, um... It's pretty messy, man. That's why the second dude avoided her. But unfortunately, she had to go through it all the same. I went through the whole birth alone, the whole nine months. He even... He even stopped talking to me, and I couldn't... I couldn't get a hold of Mr. Anderson because he blocked all communications, Facebook, telephone, yeah, and he that. stopped answering the phone for me, Mr. Matt. The reason I blocked her off because of the stuff she was doing on Facebook. She was, you know what I'm saying, just out there just saying, this is my baby daddy, knowing she been with us. I've people. never put on Facebook you know that you're my baby she, daddy. People will ask me, even my baby mama, the one, the, my girl I'm with, I ain't with her now because that's destroyed, you know? So since you had such real doubts, did you pursue a DNA test at all? Did you? Yeah. Yes. You say, I want to have a paternity test? Yes, I did. What happened? And we argued about that. What, what is the argument? She admitted she didn't know. He wanted me to pay half of DNA test, but Mr. Mapson also wanted me to pay half. I wasn't going to pay half for both people. Mr. Anderson, on the other hand, is the person she doesn't want to be the father of her baby. Now, he's here to know if he's a dad or not. You seem like you feel emotional right now, Mr. Anderson. What do you I'd, feel? I'd have been through so much. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know what I went through before I got here. What, what are you feeling now? I'm feeling pain. Because hurt. this situation really bothers you. And this situation has affected my life, you know? My baby mama texting her all the time, talking about this situation. Well, anyway, we're getting to it. She called police on me. I had to get my stuff, get out. You know, 
I got on now. After that happened, another man there. She done kicked me out. I done spent money. Is that right now? And now, Mr. Anderson's relationship is destroyed, Ms. Whitman. But the truth of the matter is, is you're worried that the situation is gonna destroy your relationship with Mr. Mapson because you don't wanna be with Mr. Anderson. No, there's no way that me and Mr. Anderson could be together. The stakes are pretty high here. A lot of lives are affected by the paternity doubt, and it's finally time for the truth. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Anderson, you are not her father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I knew it. I knew it all the time. All that stuff you've done to me. We have another result. Boy. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Mapson, you are her father. Now, Mr. Patterson's in court with a wary and determined heart. Now, he's in court to prove that he is the father of the defendant's four-year-old son. It to prove that you are four-year-old Demarcus Patterson Jr.'s biological father. You named him and have cared for your junior since birth and are furious the defendant now claims another man is his father. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. Now, she's saying that she and the other possible father, Mr. Siegler, didn't work out in any way. He even signed a birth certificate willingly without a doubt in his mind. And he even denied the DNA test that was provided before he was to sign the birth certificate. All his actions gave her a sense of security, so she decided to stick with what he wanted and didn't contest it in any way. Yeah, he did but do that. But that was it. When he had the baby, Demarcus looked over, said, that's my baby. We, name, we ain't naming him no Christian. We naming him Demarcus Patterson. Did you say that, Mr. That ain't exactly how it happened. How did it go? When I looked the baby in the eye, I was like, dang, you know, he just completely just be, be quiet, just quit crying and everything like he was at peace. And I looked at him, and that's when the doctors left the room. She was like, what name should we give him? I was like, oh, no. Then she said, I always wanted a junior. And I was like, you'll do that? And then that's when the name came about, Demarcus Latarius Patterson Jr. Well, when you tell this woman I've always wanted a junior... He ain't say that. He I ain't really get to pick the name, because remember, it's always up to the woman to pick the name. Please. Pick whatever. Demarcus <laughs> said, I don't care what you think. This is my baby, and we're naming him Demarcus Latarius Patterson Jr. Junior. If and she named him the Martin yes, Latarius Why, Patterson Man, Jr., well, you, you know definitely gotta had to agree to that. So you signed the birth certificate. Yes, Your Honor, I signed the birth certificate. Willingly. Yes, Your Honor. But doubts always come with complications, man, and the complications were all over their lives. Her big mistake was when she tried to let the other man in the child's life, and things started to fall apart. But, okay, but if you know the real truth, and you know that he might not be the biological father, why give in to the name and name this child after him? Because no Knowing that there's a love, possibility. I was in love with him. Mm -hmm. We were together all the time. I mean, he demanded it that that's what he wanted. He denied the DNA test. So I'm like, you know what? Sure. We're going to roll with this. Let's go with it. <laughs> My heart, I so solidly wanted it to be Demarcus's baby. Right. And in your young mind, to do something, he will when I ask. But the only reason why he stopped doing the things, like, he used to come in and just do it without me having to ask. But because I chose to allow Felicia and the Ladarius in his life, Demarcus told me, I'm going to go ahead and take a step back and let the Ladarius step in since that's his I ain't say that now. Yes, I said that I was just talking. Now, he still say Felicia, that. Felicia, hold on. You gestured and said you decided to let Felicia, that is your witness here. My, my god, mom. That's Mr. Sigler's mother. Right. So that's the other guy's mother. Right. And so you said Miss Sigler is your godmother. Demarcus sat in the car and was like, that's DJ. And when you saw those pictures, that's you when felt I, like... When I really started letting him in DJ's life, that's when mom came and got him every other day when she can or when I needed her to. He'll go pick him up, drop him off over there. All that. This, we are a big, happy family. Oh, I don't know why you pretend. So, <laughs> oh, so this is, this is a whole village. And they all got love for one another, at least to a point of tolerance. And each party knows that they got a part to play in the mess. And all of them are mature about it, which is excellent. Now, I think Mr. Patterson's taking it a little too well, probably to the point of partial indifference to the whole situation. ...has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Sigler. <laughs> you are DJ's biological father, Mr. Sigler. What do you feel right now? Were you just with Mr. Wilson or were you also with one or more men as well? Wife accused of sleeping with her husband's brother. 29-year-old paternity still in question due to mother's verbal abuse, and a careless woman doesn't even know the number of people she slept with at the time of conception. Boy, oh boy, it's time for some more paternity court.
A man denies fathering his promiscuous ex-girlfriend's daughter because he claims she was sleeping around throughout their relationship. All on the internet, I mean, you know, um, go to the apartment, everybody talking about who she messing with. So you say I... these kids aren't yours? No, they're not mine. They're not mine, not at all. And Miss Butler, you say he's absolutely incorrect. Yes, these kids is definitely his. So let me ask you this, because it's 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 right here in my court file. So let's just be honest about it. There's a significant age difference between you, Mr. Yeah. Wilson, and Ms. Butler. Well, that's an interesting view of things. And coupled with the defendant's no care in the world kind of attitude, it would seem what he's saying is true. Well, he could just be paranoid, but you've got to know. Doubts about one kid or one thing, but two? That's pretty serious. And I got a cell phone, and I seen that they've been in, she been in a whole nother relationship with this other guy. A light-skinned guy by her skin color. It wasn't a relationship. And, um, well, I mean, if, what, Okay, what, wait, 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 wait. So, I want to understand this. At the time Zariah was conceived, you thought you all were committed. I thought so. But we wasn't living together, so it was kind of different, though. Well, there's no doubt about it this time. She cheats for sure, and it must have gotten quite far for it to happen that often. So we never really fit. So, Mr. Wilson, how did you even find out Ms. Butler was pregnant with Zariah? Because she's admitting to everything you're saying. Yeah. So... Um, well, we're still in close contact. You know, and I thought, like I said, um, I gave another chance, and she talking about she wasn't gonna do it no more. And, you know, doing the lying like she always do. She a bitch or a liar. And, um, I thought we was... I honestly don't blame the guy for having doubts. It's no question if she cheated. It's if this happened during the time of conception, as she said, that's the question. Okay, and, and so you couldn't tell a nurse or anybody to call him? I mean, it wasn't on my mind. Because I wasn't a dad. So who's on the birth certificate? Um, that was the situation. I gave the, um, the, the nurse came in and asked what the baby's name gonna be. So she gave the baby's first name. Now, I, I, at the time, I thought it could be my baby. So I told her the last name would be Wilson. I honestly can't understand her end game in this one. She's been smiling every five seconds, and it makes her look guilty of all that she's being accused of. I mean, she's not even talking in parables, you know? It, it just looks like she doesn't even know what she's saying. Zariah Butler, Mr. Wilson, you are not the father. Told you. Are not? Yeah, she said it. I'm not the daddy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's not crazy. Zariah? Yeah, she's not my baby. Okay, I'm a bit confused. Is she slow or something? She seems out of touch, like she's, I don't know, stimulated or high. She doesn't even seem surprised, and her attempted surprise is a world class failure. Why don't you just be honest, Miss Butler, and let us know whether you really believe Mr. Wilson is Nyana's biological father? So, is that to say that if you had to doubt one of the children, you really didn't know if Zariah's was his, but Nyana, you're pretty confident about? Yes. Honestly, this is pretty painful to watch, but the plaintiff also has to take some blame for this. I mean, he's almost 50. He should have known better than to hang around this level of ridiculousness. This is all going on when Nayani was conceived. Yeah. So we can pretty much say that there's paternity doubt here, too, if that yeah. was going on. And Miss Butler, who were you dating other than Mr. Wilson? Because he even says you weren't living together, so he was kind of coming and going, and you were also dating other people. Do you know definitively who you were dating at that time? I mean, I wasn't dating, but I did see the guy, like, a couple of times, and... You know who the guy is? She doesn't even know how many people she was with. That's like another level of irresponsibility and unseriousness. Mr. Wilson, you are the father. <laughs> A woman brings her ex-boyfriend to court to prove to him that he's the father of their 29-year-old daughter after telling him that he wasn't years ago. You open this case to prove to the defendant that he is your daughter Sherelle's father so you can save your relationship with your daughter. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Rowan, you claim you initially believed you were Sherelle's father, but your doubt was substantiated by the plaintiff's words. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Sherelle points, you claim your life has suffered significantly due to the lies your mother told you growing up. It's a mistake you can't come back from unless you prove it, and that's what she's doing in the courtroom. Uh, naive, so, you know, I ran with it, you know. Take 
take me to your relationship back in the day. What was it like? It was a high school? Yeah, we was in high school together. We started going together and we had like a little ritual. You know, every day I get out of school, I would go home and my mom, she'd be at work and here come Miss Points every day. She'd come over. This man is truly built differently. Flamboyantly dressed but down to earth, his ways of expressing his doubts never disrespected her. You say he signed the birth certificate. Yes, But whether it was signed or not, we'll get back to that later. At the end of the day, you all left the hospital pretty much together with a new baby. Yes, we did. And at what point did you feel like this is not my child and started to deny her? I never denied her. Two years into it, she told me that somebody else was the father and I wasn't even trying to hear it. I'm like, I done been daddy for two years. And then I'm like, she's going on my income taxes. I know that. So that <laughs> wasn't no problem, you did. <laughs> so, uh... He's naturally hilarious and his perspective on how things work is pretty unconventional. But what's conventional here is his reaction to her telling him that he's not the father. Did you confront your mother? Did you begin to ask questions? Yes, Your Honor. When I was 16, I family was just like, I wanted to know. And we were sitting on my granny's porch and she just looked at me and she was like, I look like the other guy. And then I looked at her and was like, huh? And she was like, yeah. And But she never said nothing else when I asked her. So she just blurted it out. Yes. You look like that other guy. Or when she get mad at me, she'd tell me I look like that other guy. Really? Is that what you're saying, Miss Point? You the plaintiff is emotionally abusive and manipulative, saying things to mess with the people that she claims to love. But this is even more than that. It's probably her version of telling the truth. Mr. Rowan. Yeah, ma'am. You are not on Sherelle's birth certificate. I uh, know I didn't sign it. I don't do birth certificates. But another man's name is. <laughs> Hmm, well, that's... Miss Point. Makes me want to just clench my pearls now, cause... <laughs> I don't see how that could be. I mean, how was he even at the hospital when I was there? And... Well, we're at a crossroads. She was lying about the birth certificate, and it could mean she knew all along. The benefit of the doubt extends to this sort of sketchiness. So what? did he believe he was the father? Why did he sign the birth certificate? He believed he was the father? Yes, he did. And Mr. Rowan's been taking care of Sherelle. Yes, Your Honor. Come on, let the truth yes, come out yes, now. We're here. We're here now. We're here. At the time he signed the birth certificate, did you really have a question as to whether or not Mr. Rowan was the father or this other man, or did you know this other man was the father? Well, believing something to be true is a much more different thing than it actually being true. There's still a possibility the defendant is the father since he did have sexual relations with her during the time of conception. You are not the hey, father. Hey, no. After being referred to paternity court by the couple's court with the Cutlers, a woman wants to prove that her husband fathered her daughter. So, Ms. Dix, you admit that you've been unfaithful in... In the past, In yes. the past. Yes. And you own that. Yes, I do. So, do you understand why Mr. Hunt doubts yes, what you I say? Do. I do. Why are you cheating in the relationship? What what happened? Um, in the beginning of our marriage, he would leave and stay gone sometimes for periods of times. I left for a month. Well, at least she admits what she did wasn't right. But the ugly part about it is she's trying to blame it on something. Him leaving or being emotionally unavailable or whatnot. So she wanted to hurt him by letting him catch her cheating. That sounds more like self-sabotage than trying to hurt someone. So unprotected sex with this guy one time out in front of your house, mm -hmm. but when you get pregnant, do you just tell your husband I'm pregnant or do you tell the other guy? To I never told him. So just tell your husband? Yeah. Once she tells you, Mr. Hunt, what was your response? I, I, all the, everything else just went out of the window. I was just happy to... I was having a baby girl. And so, at what point does the doubt kick in? When I'm thinking about the time and I'm realizing that I, I was gone. That's honestly a lot to handle. This woman needs help figuring out what she wants. She claims that she wants him, but every one of her actions hints otherwise. But at this point, it's too late because he already thinks the world of her. I mean, accusing her of sleeping with his own brother? She's been honest so far. 
I mean, because it, sh she clearly cheated. And I mean, he's gone. What is okay. if, if he's still no. there, when well, he's look, gone, why look. is he still there? I'm gonna me, take my brother me with me. Me cheating and then me sleeping with someone who's blood related to him. What kind of okay? What kind of what characteristics would have I shown you as you being my auntie that I'm that type of person? If I slept with somebody I mean, else you, who ain't I mean, no you're intentionally him, willing to get caught in front of your own house. Yeah, right? I mean, so yeah, that clearly proves that you're that no, person. No, no, no. All right, so. no. The aunt didn't have anything much to say than to point fingers, which is only making things worse for him. It'll take something as small as that don't have nothing to do with the baby or anything, and he'll go off. But I know what it's I know what it's about. I know why, you know? So that's why I decided to come here to just get this out of the way, no. get it done. Look, so I that way no, I, I look, I can't. I can't sleep. I hold my daughter, and instead of me loving my daughter and looking at my daughter, I'm analyzing my daughter. He never got to reply yes or no to that question about him sleeping with her. We're just gonna take their word for it unless the truth proves something different. You are not the father. The plaintiff's in court saying that she and her ex-boyfriend planned a baby and now that the baby's finally here, he's denying it. I can't say I admit it to anything because I always say yeah, I'll do this and I'll do that. How did this relationship even start? Ma'am, oh, your honor, this relationship started through social media. We found each other through oh, Facebook. Oh, social media, I should've known. No wonder we talking about social media. Okay, go ahead. We found each other through social media, so we had a mutual friend. Um, they vouched for him. So the plaintiff says when she met him, she met him through a mutual friend who vouched for him and they started their relationship. He told me I was gonna be his baby's mother because I'm the best mother in the world. That's why he said it. Actually. Facts. No. Facts, Your Honor. No. I am the we best was, mother we in the world. Having, he can't you know say what I'm anything. He hasn't even stepped all, up to be even a stepdad. But step the man that she had dropped her off at my house claiming was her brother was the dude she was sleeping with. Correct, Your Honor. Oh. It definitely and was. Basically, what the story was, she already came to my house pregnant by her so called brother. You feel me? And. You know, this is actually kind of funny. When he left, she started sleeping with other people in his mom's house. The plaintiff says that she told them immediately after she found out she was pregnant. The marquee gentleman and the defendant, but what gave her the certification was the conception calendar. Me the conception calendar. I got pregnant February 21st. That's the same day you left. So that week and that week before, I had a menstrual period. We're sleeping together the entire time while I'm on in the shower. Well, she did admit that she had two boyfriends that she was sleeping with at the same time because he also had two girlfriends. So her conception calendar might be a little dented. She says she went to medical school and she does know a lot about the female reproductive system. At this point, Judge Lake couldn't take it anymore. Everybody know how to meet halfway to make a baby, but don't know that know how to meet halfway to come see the baby and establish a relationship with a parent. None of my family know about the baby. No, that's not like, my point. That's not my point. I mean, that's bad. 15 months is a long time. He says he makes plans, but the plaintiff doesn't show because she doesn't want her baby around his new girlfriend. Step up. I don't care what you got going in your life because she'd ask to be here. We asked for her to be here and it's not fair. I grew up in foster care. He did too, so we both know exactly how it is. It's not fair to her and I'm, I'm not gonna keep accepting it at all. I mean, when this test come back saying he's the father, he's going to step up. So did you grow up without your father? Is I grew up without saying? my mother and father. The plaintiff breaks down and tells her tales of how she's raised herself since she was 12 because she never grew up with either one of her parents and she doesn't want the same for her daughter. She's raised herself to be strong and she doesn't need anyone, but her daughter does, and she can't deny her that. Judge Lake decides to check the results. Mr. Jackson, you are not the father. <laughs> Chaos in the courtroom as a man tells his girlfriend that he was faking his happiness when she told him she was pregnant. Ooh, a man denies his child because the mother named him Michael II instead of Michael Jr. Oh man, these are evil liars caught on paternity court. Just away so he'll never get to know him, and I just feel like it's it's important that he gets. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, and everything in between. Now, who's ready for some drama? Cause we got a woman who's in court to prove that the man she was in a one month relationship with is the biological father of her twins. 
Now let's get into this and run away, bro. Run away. Hiding your children for dubious reasons. He is the father. They look just like him. Um, his friends told me they that they looked like him. The conception date was matched up to when we were together during our relationship. I was with two other people afterwards, but both of them have been um, excluded. They're out of the picture. So he is the father. Look at them. Look at him. Okay, so Miss Wolf abruptly disappears after one month, only to come back and drop a bomb on Mr. Shelton that he's the father of not just one, but two boys. Yeah, Miss Wolf indeed. Damn, let's find out why she disappeared. I wanted a new lifestyle for my kids. They deserve better. So I just, the, I thought the best thing to do was cut everything off. This is before I found out I was pregnant and everything, so. And why are you emotional? What are you feeling? Um. I just want my kids to know their dad. I mean, my oldest one, his dad passed away, so he'll never get to know him. And I just feel like it's it's important that he gets to know them. You know, it's just insane how Miss Wolf disappeared on Mr. Sheldon and like to find out about her pregnancy on Facebook. That's like kind of unfair and probably one hell of a way to wake up, right? So Mr. Duquois participated in the baby's birth. Yes, he did. And she also told me that the Ralph could possibly be one of the fathers also. Oh, she did? Later on, yes, later on, Your Honor. That's not true. I was already pregnant. He, I thought he knew I was already pregnant. I thought we had already discussed this. He's acting like, no, Luke is mine. So that's why we're here today, to prove that Jerry's the father of both of them. Why would you joke with someone to the extent that he now believes that he's a biological father, right? Like, I guess he didn't take it as a joke. I'm pretty eager to hear what he's got to say, and I'm sure you are too. Special. I'm joking with you. What? It's not. It, I never told him he was a biological father ever. It's been a joking around. He's been there since they were born, so he is their dad. She was partying, and she was not clear of the time and dates of when that happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, it makes sense that the twins could be fraternal and they might have different dads. But like, how crazy would that be, though, if that turns out to be the reality of the situation? It's, I would love for him to be a part of their life. Um, I hadn't reached out to him at all. I was trying to file for child support, um, but I would love for him to be there. Your Honor, last time that we, I talked to her, she was supposed to bring the kids over and we were supposed to hang out, but instead I gave her my address and then two days later, I got child support papers in the mail. <gasps> Wait, now hold up. But she just gave the impression that although she wanted to file child support against Mr. Shelton, she didn't. But I guess maybe we read it wrong. Let's just find out what the results got to say on this one. I've asked her so we could see if we can come hang out, so we can come to an agreement, so we could do the paternity test, but it never just came, we never- But we don't need to hang out. The it. thing is, you need to be there for your kids if that's what this is. It's not me and you, it's you it's and the kids. You. It's about the children, Yes, I know. so we don't need to hang out. We need to go get the DNA test like we are doing here. All right, you know what, I feel bad, right? Like he really wanted to be the dad of one of the twins at least, you know, but bullet dodged. Well, let's find out about the next one. You are not. The it has been determined by this court, Mr. Shelton, you are not the father. Right, some people want to be a good dad, you know? And frankly, like, I don't understand what she's even doing in court. Like, I hope she finds the real father of the twins because every kid needs to have a father. This court. Mr. Shelton, you are not the father. All right, so check this out. A woman's in court after the man she was in a relationship with abandoned her and denied the kid that she claimed she had for him. Now she wants to prove that he is indeed her child's biological father. But ladies, y'all gotta be smart. When a man says he wants you to be his baby mama, walk the hell away. After having our first son together, we lived together for about three years. We found out that after the new year, we were gonna have a second son. He decided he didn't want anything to do with me. I ended up leaving, living with another family member uh, just to better our lives. We were doing a switch off back and forth, watching our son together. And after that, we got into a lot of disagreements, just arguing a lot. She named your kid Michael II, but you wanted her to name him Michael Jr. And because of that, you're certain the kid's not yours? Like, is it just me, or is that completely baseless and totally idiotic thinking here? Well, she explained to me and told me she was pregnant. Uh, at the time before that, we were kind of on and off. We were fighting constantly. I don't think we were really together at that time. I, I hear, I know she was with other guys. I really didn't think that was, the kid was mine at all. There was a chance the kid was mine. The dates didn't add up when she told me. She constantly changed the, her due dates. Like, it just, nothing made sense. It added up. 
All right, you know, at this point, it's pretty evident that this man is just like coming up with different things to say, right? And Miss Fisher has been unfaithful, but he's not brought out one single bit of proof. Not to mention his testimony so far have been illogical as hell. Let me tell you about the biggest fight we've ever had. This is this will be something, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm having a bad day. I, I'm, I'm working at the time. We were working at the same place. I had to work a double. I was sick and not feeling good. I finally get off work. I call her. She's picking me up. I didn't have a car at the time. I wasn't driving. I'm calling and calling and calling. She doesn't answer the phone. I really don't see why he's going on and on and on about these lies, right? Like, is he really trying to avoid taking up responsibility for his kids? Because I really don't see any other reason here. He didn't want to sign the birth certificate, which forced me to give my second son my last name after his first son has his last Find name. Find his real father. One month later, I show up to his doorstep after I honked outside, come outside, take the baby out of the car. I physically make this man hold his own child for the first time, thinking that hopefully he would feel some sort of guilt in his heart and know that this is his child when he looks at him in his eyes. He refuses to see that. So standing there holding our baby. Oh, I get it. All right, this is how it is, right? The kid's lighter skin, uh-huh. Like, brother, are you taking a look at yourself there? From children come in all colors, yeah. all shapes, sizes. Yeah. It, it doesn't, it, listen, if we could base paternity on that, this courtroom wouldn't be needed. I want to understand, Mr. Meyer, did you hear anything else that would make you feel like this child could potentially be someone else's biological child? All right, man, you like the cookies and cream in this room, you know what I'm saying? The fact that he said that he didn't intend to be in a relationship with her from the beginning might just be the only honest thing that he has said so far, but it's a little too late for that. As in he is referring to when I leave to go to my grandmother's house for a couple hours to visit. I'm not allowed to do that without him. I don't care. To my father's. Do you believe store. he's just not being possessive, Miss Fish? Absolutely, because I was young, naive. I am tired of doing this on my own. I want help. I need help. All right, I gotta say, I completely admire Miss Fisher's confidence and maturity, right? She seems like someone who knows what she's saying, and that's a great thing. Anyway, let's check out those results. And he may be in reference to a time where I stayed with my grandmother during Christmas, and I had to stay with her for a couple of days because he was getting um, verbally vulgar with me a little too much, and I couldn't take it anymore, so I needed time to myself. And I took my first son with me to go stay with my grandmother. You know, Miss Fisher knew exactly what she was saying, and I'm glad that it turned out the way that she said it would. Mr. Meyer definitely needs a lot of growing up to do, and I'm pretty sure child support gonna help him do it. Mr. Meyer, you are the father. This episode's gonna blow your mind. After 24 years and not having a father in her life, a woman's finally in court with her moms to prove that the defendant is indeed her biological father. So let's get into it. Explain, how has the feeling of denial affected you? You know, it affected me real bad. Like, I feel like that he wasn't responsible to even say I'm his daughter or not. And so for 24 years, You've had to deal with this. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Palmer, all her life you have been telling her that Mr. Rollins is her biological father. Yes, ma'am. Yes, You've yes, never ma told her any other man was her biological father? No. Man, that's gotta be like literal hell for a kid to go through. Like, everybody deserves a father. I can't say that enough. And the fact that she was rejected by the person she believes was hers, it's just sad. But not okay. coming to me and saying that you are my father. You see, that's what I'm talking about. He is not a man to own up to nothing. Like, if you my father, just say you is. If you ain't, you ain't. Like, come on now. You ain't got to do all this switching your stories and stuff. That's not right. I never switched the story. Okay. Are you oh. a DNA test? No, okay. Hold father? on, Mr. Rollins. What you not going to do? What you're not gonna do I'm not is gonna be prosecutor. a no. What you not no? You're not gonna prosecute it because you don't have no law degree. It seemed like you're not. A Man, his feelings are actually pretty valid though. Like he feels like he's being accused when he's sure that he's not Miss Robinson's dad. But at the same time, he shouldn't downplay her emotions either. Like, her feelings are valid too, man. Well, I'm, you know, I'm looking like the dead beating. No, 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 no. You're just, you're yeah. taking on a level of guilt that nobody is really putting on you. They're telling their side of the story, and you're telling yours. You can't. No, you said persecution. With persecution, well, there's guilt. Don't bring up work. Hold on, honey. This is my business. That's, if you talk about persecution, I then you're talking your about business. somebody's making you feel guilty. What I'm telling you is you're not guilty, but what you are is a possibility. Multitasking is such an interesting word to use for someone who's had a number of sexual partners in the past. Mr. Rollins, uh, he's 
She's kind of crafty here. I'm liking this. Did I know I would? You're saying in a polite way she was having sex with more than one man during that time. Exactly. And you know that for a fact because these men were mm -hmm. associates of yours? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I only had one boyfriend and me and him had broke up when I had a two night stand with Mr. Rollin over there and that's the only one. And when it, when it came to his test, he was not the father, so I know he's the father. All right, that's, that's honestly, this dude's got jokes, right? Right, but look, if he feels that there's something about Miss Robinson that can make him tell if they're related or not, then of course he'd want to know. You told her, let me see your feet? Yeah. Why, Mr. Rylan? Well, I'm not a genetic specialist, but I do know she has a congenital digital deformity. And, and the other from parties that I was speaking her upon, feet, yeah. you discovered that. Oh, yes. And therefore, you came to the medical conclusion. All right, so it looks like Mr. Rollins is starting to consider the fact that he might actually be her biological father. But let's take a look at what the results got to say. Who knows that? Beautiful picture. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but... So, Mr. Rollins, are yeah. you saying you see a resemblance now? I mean, yes, yeah, with, with, with the uh, makeup and everything on, I, I noticed that now. You see it. Yeah. You do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Mm hmm Yes, I do. I, honestly, I do, Yana. You know, man, I feel bad for Miss Robinson. Like, and I hope that her mom can finally start being honest with herself and the daughter so that the poor lady can just find her dad. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Rollins, you are not the father. <laughs> All right, so let's get ready for some chaos. A woman's in court to prove that the defendant is her child's biological father, but the defendant has medical evidence to prove otherwise. So let's hop right on in. I know I've only slept with him, and I know who my children belong to. Hearing this from him and him getting it from my own full-blooded sister, Carly, it, it, it just, it just Carly, boils me. Tell the truth. It boils me. So, Your Ms. Honor, I got something to say. She's telling false lies, okay? I know for a fact that he I was not the only one she was sleeping with. I guess you're there in the same with. bed with me when I'm sleeping with these people, I get. <laughs> Man, this is a first. Like, I don't think I've seen a case where a woman's sister is vehemently testifying against her. Like, damn. That's crazy. I used to work out a lot, and one time I, I strained myself too hard, and I had to go to the hospital, and the doctor told me that I couldn't have kids, that my testicles had dropped by that time. You know, that actually is kind of mind-blowing. Like, it makes sense that he believes that the kid can't be his, but then again, miracles do happen, right? Once her son was born, she was cheating a lot of time with multiple men. You know that for certain? Yes, Your Honor. How do you know that? Explain. Her sister used to tell me that she used to sleep with this guy and that guy, and I didn't believe her at first, but until, the, until it started coming to me about the dude she talked to all the time friendly with. Miss Hicks is just unbelievably annoying at this point in time. Like, it's clear that she's got no genuine love for her sister because no good person would constantly betray her sister like that. And Miss Hicks responded, you know he leaves, so you can come over anytime. Yes, Your Honor. You saw this message and you feel like she was definitely sleeping around. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Hicks, I have to ask you, did something similar to this come through your phone? I don't even remember that text message, Your Honor. I honestly I do not you don't. remember I bet this you don't text even remember message. When. Miss Hicks just keeps telling different lies. Like, it's beginning to seem like she's got a thing for, you know, for this bro and, like, wants him for herself. I mean, like, hey, there is such a thing as transferring brownie points from your girl to her sister, you know what I'm saying? All right, take me to the point you realize you're pregnant. Mr. Smith, he came to me and said, I've been sick, I've been throwing up, and I've been feeling funny, so I think you need to take a pregnancy test. So he goes to the store and comes back with a pregnancy test that has two in a box. I took the first one, it came out negative. He was like, go ahead and take the other one so we can see the results of that. So I take the other one while he's right there in the bathroom watching. And it immediately pops up that it was positive. And so he was like, I knew it, I knew it. He was happy, he was happy. So all this, this doubt in it, and he I don't get it. Said he can't have kids, so he don't <laughs> think the baby is his. So, Mr. Smith, you found out she's pregnant? Yes, were you happy about it? Faking it to her, but I know in my mind that faking it. I can't have Oh, you were it. faking it to her? Yes, Your Honor. It is no way anybody can fake anything. I mean, she... at the hospital, you are there. He was like... All right, so from what the medical expert said, it's pretty evident that Mr. Smith is still able to make babies. 
This obviously means that his baby batter was still good and this kid could still be his. So let's find out what the results gotta say. Harry, it devastates the... It, it, I don't why do you say it devastates the pain. Because it's coming from my full-blooded sister. We have the same mom, same dad. And I don't know why would this come from you anyway. As because close I know as we you are... Do, Carlisha. <laughs> we're, we're very close. Now, I'm not really surprised the results came out this way. Like, you know, the plaintiff said they would. Now, I just hope that she and Mr. Smith, you know, can mend their issues and maybe kick Miss Hicks' sister out of their relationship. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Smith, you are the father. <laughs> what next?